Today we're going to be talking about a technique that I use for editing music and cutting to the beat. And so we have our timeline here. This is a demo reel for a company I own called Corporate Streams. And we're going to go ahead and add some markers to the music to make it easier to cut to the beat. Now, with music, there's usually a strong cadence, right? The downbeat that we want to cut to. Music is usually in either 4-4 four, four, or 3-4. And all that really means in simple terms is every four beats, the music repeats, or every three beats, the music repeats. So um, I'm a musician. I play drums and guitar and different things. And so there's this kind of natural rhythm that I have learned over time. But uh, one of my editors, Fahim, is actually not a musician, so um, it's hard to explain one of these things, uh, you know, this concept to him because he doesn't necessarily have a music background. So I'm making this video to show Fahim, but I'm also showing you with this great tutorial. So let's jump in and see how I do this. So first off, I'm going to play the song and we're going to listen to the hits that happen. All right, so hopefully you can hear me as well. You can see the waveforms on that kick, the big thump at the bottom, you know, the bass sound. Those are what those those tops of those waveforms look like. That's what it sounds like, right? And so we can also hear from a big picture perspective, um, the music dynamically will go somewhere. And so there's a spot here where it's a little bit quieter and then it builds back up. Um, so relatively speaking, this is a pretty consistent song. Depending on what you're working with, you might have a song that has more dynamics or less dynamics. And it really depends on what you need for your music and what you need for your song. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the beginning. And this time I'm going to use the M key for marking um, or marker. And so we're going to add markers to the song. And this is going to allow us to really lock in those cuts right on the beat. Typically speaking with music, you might have a downbeat, which is on the one, right? So if we counted that out, it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So I would suggest having your one and your three be the beats that you hit or you mark, but sometimes you want to cut a little bit faster. So you'll use all four beats. So you'll put a mark down one, two, three, four. So for, for this first tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and mark every beat. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, cool. So the nice thing about marking these out, and I, I think I missed the first one, yes, slightly. You can kind of see it there. Um, the nice thing about marking these out is you can kind of get a good idea of if our edits are actually hitting on the downbeat of our music. So let me go ahead and hit the plus here, and we'll go in a little tighter. Um, we can kind of see that it's really supposed to be on that front. So if I need to shift this a little, I can by a frame or two, but honestly, it's relatively pretty good. So. What, we, what I would normally do is go through this whole song and mark out the whole song so you have every single beat. And so, like I said, it, it'll allow us to kind of visibly see, are we in time, are we ahead, are we behind? This one looks slightly behind. And so then I can go back and start to refine my edits and use the slip tool, right, and kind of adjust my edits as needed um, between each cut. So I'm going to use in, which allows me to just move the edit point and not the frames. And then I can kind of go through and make sure that these are landing on the right frame. So in the tutorial video if, for YouTube, we can skip ahead, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark out this whole song, the rest of the song. Oops, sometimes that happens too where I wasn't ready to hit M, my hand wasn't on the keyboard. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and try again. Da, da. You'll notice the music changed a few beats back, right? So with music, there's different parts of a song, like a chorus or a verse. Oh, and apparently if I do that, <laughs> okay, so if I, if I drag this indicator, it's not gonna allow me to make marks as I'm dragging, that's okay. So you, you probably heard that right there, the music changed kind of tones, right? And it went into something else. Great, so that downbeat right there, this one right here, I'm gonna mark as red because it changes, right? So this part of the music changes a little bit. And you can kind of do that if you're listening to the song and you hear, I think it changed one more time somewhere in here. I might mark those out so I can visibly see, oh, the mood changes, right? So that might be a major uh, inflection point for me to make an adjustment or to change the scene. So um, I can visibly recognize that those cuts. You can see it in the timeline down below, like this strong hit here, 
it's probably a good time for us to transition between one part of the video to another or go from one piece of b-roll to another or what have you so all right let's go back over this so i just skipped the beats that are already down there this time i'm not going to scroll with it i'm just going to do it uh, by ear instead of by visuals and i'm just going to kind of do this throughout the whole song So I stopped uh, because this is another transitional piece. So I'll put that in red again. I'll go back a couple of beats and then I'll keep going. So even in this quiet part where the beat's not as strong, I'm going to go ahead and mark the same kind of speed, those down beats. This will allow me to really match those hits as we're going through. There we go. Okay, so that picks back up again, right? So let me make sure I have the right one here. That one. I'm going to double click on it, turn it to red. It's going to give me a different amount of time. Cool. Music changes again. Pausing it, double clicking on the red. Sorry, double clicking on the marker to turn it red. Going back, zooming out. Okay, cool. So let's say you're doing this and you accidentally hit a marker that's slightly off, right? There's a couple things you can do to try to correct this. Um, you can zoom in and like visibly look at the spacing, kind of pull this so it's roughly right. You can double click the individual marker and hit delete, or you can just frankly hit undo, right? So <laughs> if you had something that's off, you can just go one by one. So it's probably good not to do too many, especially if you miss something up, you can pause for a second, go back and fix the one that you messed up. Um, that happens all the time, it's no big deal. Um, and so wherever you hit M is gonna show you like sh the strong beat of where your edit's gonna snap to, right? So if this red marker is slightly off, then I might snap this incorrectly. So these markers are important rhythm rhythmically to get in the right spot. So, all right, let's keep going, almost done. There's another one. Okay, cool. So this one's a little different. This one's the ending of the song. Let me make sure it landed in the right spot. Cool. So then from here, it fades out, right? So there's two things we can do. We could basically uh, continue the beat through this day crescendo, right? Which basically means the music gets softer, day crescendo. Or um, I can leave it as is and just know that that's the last beat I'm probably going to use. And so, um, great, great. So we've marked out this whole song. So now what do we do? Well, we can go through our edit. And like I said, we can adjust all these edit points. Somehow there's, there's a gap in our footage. So don't mind that. We'll be fixing that in a little bit. But um, what's also really important or a really cool trick is when we try to fade out or end a song. And so before we try to do this manually where we had one song fade in and another song fade out, I'm gonna show you a much easier way of doing this um, between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove all of these keyframes here. Um, I'm gonna select and delete. I guess I could have done the other one first. Let's try this again. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna delete this other piece here and then so we see how this red one, right, was the indicator that it's changing themes. Um, and then this indicator is our last solid beat, right? And then it fades out. So I'm gonna trim right at that beat. I'm gonna go to the red beat here, come in here. And I'm just gonna try this for the first time. Sometimes this works right away. Sometimes it takes some finesse. I'm just literally gonna shrink those two together. I'm gonna add a little bit of a cross dissolve between the two, and we're gonna listen to it to see if it fades out better. Boom. 
that's how easy that is <laughs> with markers. Um, so I got that obviously on the first time. So what we're doing is basically shoring up or squaring up the last hit right here with the end of a section. So that just happened to work really well for us in this uh, area. And so let's say that um, we actually want this to end maybe a little further away and not so soon. So um, a section change like this where it's a big red one, that's an easy win, right? An easy thing to do. Um, but if we cannot put it right there, we actually want to count uh, to four again because that's the downbeat, right? We talked about earlier how music tends to repeat in either four counts or three counts, four, four, or three, four, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Most music's like that. Um, I would say, I don't know, especially with pop music and what we use for editing videos, I would say, gosh, 70% of videos kind of have that cadence of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right? And then other videos might have a three, four, which is kind of almost like a swing fill, or um, there's also six, eight, which is also similar to a three, four, but it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's a different kind of energy and different kind of feel for a three, four song versus a four, four song. Anyways, we got to know, um, you know, if it's three, four or four, four, and you can kind of do that by listening to the music and picking it out. Um, so I just know that this is a four, four. So this is the downbeat. So one, so we're going to go two, three, four, one. So this beat, because we know it's going to be a downbeat again, I'm going to go ahead and, and just delete this and just listen to it and see if that's the spot. We're going to shore this up again or, or put these next to each other, but let's just listen to it. I'll go back a little bit and I'll try to uh, verbalize what I'm hearing. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So right where I cut off the music, that's our downbeat, right? So like I said, with music, it's it's very patternistic, right? So we have four beats between sections or when that repeats. And then overall, like the whole song, if we're looking at the big picture, we actually can have like verses, which are in here, right? Or a chorus, which might be here, back to a verse, to another chorus, to a bridge, and then another chorus. I hope that makes sense. So if you're ever listening to music, you'll actually start to pick out the structure of the song. Um, and that's really helpful to know too. But anyways, let's just, let's see if I'm if I've got this right. Um, I've just deleted this one section here. We're gonna listen to it one more time. See if it lands correctly. One. Yeah, so that works pretty well. It's not as good as ending it here. So we're gonna go back to what, what I had before, but uh, I just wanted to show you that example. So let's listen to this one more time to see how it sounds and it's completed for. It's like it was designed that way. <laughs> I love it when it comes together like that. So cool. A couple other tricks um, while we're here. I like to, I know this kind of decrescendos here or like fades off. I obviously just added a quick dissolve here or transition there. We can actually grab this here and extend it if we want so that it has a nice gentle uh, fade off here at the end. Great. And honestly, this fade off, you don't have to keep it that long if you wanted to sh like, you know, match it to the end of this clip here. We could do that. We'll listen to it one more time. Yeah, that works pretty well. Depending on your song, sometimes you do want to fade in, in the beginning. This one already has a natural, you know, one built that's built into the song. Can extend this and see that it already kind of does its own fade so we may not need to add our own so let's listen to the intro yeah so you see how you hear it go boom, and it hits right hits on that downbeat so it, it ramps up and then we have our solid hit you can kind of still see in the waveforms where that hits right so that's another good visual i like to have the markers though uh, primarily because if the song dies off or gets quieter right there might be a certain section where it's quieter we may want to make sure we still visibly see the markers. So. so this one's a little harder to see. I mean, it's still there, but those in-between beats, definitely you kind of get lost in them now. OK, cool. Now that we have all of our markers, we've adjusted our ending so we can make the song exactly the right length that we want. We would go back and adjust all of our hits, right? All of our cuts to, to match at the right spot. 
this next step will shape the pace of your piece. So just because we put a bunch of these hits in or a bunch of these uh, markers in doesn't mean we have to use every single marker. So you'll see between like this clip here of um, the, the gentleman at uh, the show, the Tesla Bull Stampede, we've actually used two beats, one, two, right? So this will also show us visibly like, hey, are we favoring one clip over another? The Jay Leno thing actually has an extra beat in there because of this ramp up, and that's totally fine. Um, so we can see the Jay Leno shot here. It is a little bit longer than everything else, but it's also because this little intro thing is there. So that's totally fine. So if we zoom out, we can see that in this section, the pace picks up just a little bit. So if I come in here, let's make sure that our, our beat is matching. I'm going to use the end tool, which will allow me to slide stuff over. Yep, that one's good. That one's good. Nice. Okay, cool. This one ends a little late, it looks like. Two frames. It's okay. Now, I have seen a tutorial or a video online about how basically our, our mind anticipates audio and the beat of audio. So we could even potentially justify or, or cheat this whole thing. So everything, instead of being on the beat, would be like one frame ahead of the beat, right? Um, and some people feel like that gives it a different energy um, to have it just hit a little bit faster um, visibly than audibly. That's up to you. Um, what you could do is basically edit this whole thing, right? Get it the way you like, and then go to the beginning and just basically shift this audio, sorry, this video, right? You can just uh, shift it back, shift it back. You would have to probably lock some other stuff, but, um, or I guess you can grab this whole section and then do it, do it like that, or lock the audio and then shift everything forward one frame or whatever, if you want to do it the easy way. <laughs> um, that's another thing to consider doing to see if, you know, cheating everything to the front of the beat or one beat, you know, one frame earlier might give you a little bit more um, energy or hit with your beats. That's totally up to you. Um, you also like think of it musically over the whole song, like, right, there's usually some sort of dynamics where it gets um, more energetic or less energetic. So the cuts that you have here should probably match that. And so if we look at this section here, this is probably a few clips. I would hope we're matching the, the speed of the audio, right? So if, if the music kind of dies down and there's less things happening, uh, our cuts can also kind of match that and kind of slow down a little bit. Um, now I will say kind of the opposite thing is true is like just before the music changes over to a new section, we might want to do the opposite, meaning instead of cutting every other beat, maybe we are cutting on the beat. So let me, um, go ahead and get these kind of dialed in and we might, Oh, we don't have enough clips to move that one. That's okay. Let's see. So these hit and then we change. Let's let's listen and watch this. Yeah, that was cool. So pop, pop, boom. Yeah, so just before the start of a new area, uh, we're basically trying to ramp up the style of or the, our cuts to match the style, I should say. So that beat was a little ahead. So it's like these little micro adjustments don't seem like a big deal, but it really locks in your edit. I will say you do not have to edit like this. This is just one style or one type of editing that you can do, um, but you should learn all the different types. <laughs> um, this one's starting to slide off the edit, I think. Let's see. So yeah, obviously our pacing here is different. So something might've gotten off, but you know what? Let's go to the beginning and let's just adjust everything as we go, ready? Just to check if we're on our hits, we are so far. Oh yeah, so. I'm so used to editing that I'll listen to stuff double time. So I'll play it with K with L and then I'll hit L again and it'll go even faster. That's super helpful. I know it's annoying when you're first starting to edit and you're like, well, I can't handle that. <laughs> but uh, trust me, the more you edit, the more you'll um, appreciate being able to speed certain things up, especially if you've heard it a thousand times um, as you're doing your work. So, all right. So I'm, Shoring up all these edits. 
they look to be pretty good. Like I said, I um, sometimes I'll be off. So I'm looking also at these markers to see if they are hitting the right spot. I think generally I, I was pretty good about the markers this time around. Let's keep listening and seeing how it sounds. That was cool. So in that section there, we actually kind of broke one of the things I just said, like one of the rules, but it actually works pretty well because it's still in beat, right? So I talked about like, if the next marker was red, that we'd be ramping up this section to go to it. You don't have to follow that pattern every single time. And that's what this section does is it, it basically has those hits um, even in the middle of something, so like that. Now, if your whole video was uh, that fast, it would probably be a little bit too much. It depends on what kind of style and what you're trying to do with your video, right? Um, as far as your montage and what you're building. So obviously there's a missing clip here. Uh, I'm just gonna skip over it for now because I'm not actually finishing this edit. I'm just working on the audio like I'm explaining. So that one was off one way or another. I actually felt it that time or, you know, when I was watching it, I felt like something was slightly off. So it's that tightening up of the edit that makes a huge difference. That one felt weird. So maybe my marker was wrong or maybe this one's, nope, it's late. All right, this one I cannot move because this clip doesn't have any more on the front end. So the trick here, if you've run out of clip is use the Y tool, the slip tool, and give yourself a couple frames and then adjust your edit. There we go. There it goes, oops. So actually this clip cuts to something else, right? Or is it, yep. Actually, no, it's, it's this clip that cuts to something else. So I'm gonna use my Y tool. What that does is it allows me to adjust this clip and slide it forward. I'm gonna do that a couple frames until you see this gentleman on the right I'm sorry, on the left just above me uh, with a green background, I'm sliding it so the clip starts on the frame with the guy with the red background. So I actually had to move it three frames over. So let's watch it. And this time we won't have that extra person in there that we're trying to avoid. Nice. Nice. And then it sped up again. We had those hits. That was good. Uh, we got to watch our rhythm. I don't know if, if I messed it up. Let's see. Down. That's good. Okay, so this one becomes off a little bit. So we're starting to get off the beat some way, shape or form. So let's uh, see. So we were doing every other beat here and then this one kind of goes to the same beat. So that's okay. And then this one. So having a, one that's only a single beat kind of doesn't work. To me, it has to be in a pattern of two. Um, so that way, basically we can get back to that downbeat, right? So we talked about how music repeats in four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So we, we have to use all four counts. So we can do one, two, three, four, one, right? But if we do one, two, three, one, that, that kind of throws us off, if that makes sense. Um, let me try to explain this one more time. So if we use a clip that's only one beat long, or yeah, one beat long, then we probably wanna have a, another one next to it that's one beat long. Or this one could be three beats long because ultimately we're trying to get to that four count where it repeats itself. So one, two, three, four, let's see. One, two, three, four, one, cool. Two, three, four, one, good two, three, four, one, great. So we probably wanna be at a cut point at this beat right here. So what that probably means is we need to either shorten this one or, and find another clip, or we can lengthen both of these back out, but we still wanna have that cut. I hope that makes sense. Let's try this. Let's find our downbeat real quick, so. Three, four, yeah. Cut. So I was off. It's this one that we want. So let me put my playhead there. And so I can adjust these other clips as needed to fit what I need it to do. 
So if I did something like this, it might work. I think one of these is off too. All right. Hmm. Got to check our lower or graphics too to see. Oh, yeah, so we're bleeding over. Let's see. That's fine. So basically where the graphic change happens. And so this clip is actually part of the first section. So that's probably why these were shorter. Let's just shore this up here. And we'll grab my slip tool. Anyways, I hope this is making sense, what I'm working on here. That one's slightly off. So we might have an extra frame in there, let's see. Yep, right there. So what that means is this clip is has two clips in one. So I'm gonna use my Y tool. I'm gonna to pull this until the frame on the right goes away. So it's the same. This shows you the first frame and the last frame, right? So this shows me that this clip of Bradley, this person um, is being used throughout this whole clip it's, and doesn't cut in the middle of the shot, if that makes sense, so. Nice. Okay. That's very good. All right, so I already know we're gonna be shortening this section because I talked to Fahim about it. I'm just gonna leave it for now because um, we're gonna be adding some more footage from other projects we just did. All right, so <laughs> I just noticed that this looks like it's, something looks off, like it looks tilted to the left. So I don't know if it's actually tilted, if that's just the way she's standing or if some sort of lines are bothering me. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and quickly fix this as well. So I'm going to go to effects controls. I'm going to select the right clip and go to motion. We're going to have to overscale this. So go to 102 ish, and then I'm going to go to rotation. And I don't remember, I always mess this up. If, oh, cool. So one got me kind of back where I wanted to go. Kind of see it's more vertical. Actually, I need a touch more. So I'm going to try 1.5 if it'll let me. Yes. Cool. Um, and I think I'll buy that. So obviously we have these black lines on the bottom and the top, these black triangles. So we have to keep oversizing this frame um, until those black lines go away. So can I do 104? I cannot, 105 it is. Okay, so. So this ending's a little long as well in these clips but we're gonna be adding some more clips, so. Cool. Not bad, not bad. So hopefully this makes sense of what we're doing. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you'd like to try this technique, please feel free to post what you've worked on in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.